As the facilitator in the debrief, our primary concern is creating a safe, non-judgmental atmosphere for people to express the thoughts, feelings, and symptoms that can emerge after an event. We base this on the critical incident stress debriefing model so that we can take it that step for further and discuss healing, coping skills, available resources, and normalize what they've experienced so that they can go forward and understand this is a natural reaction to what is sometimes a very traumatic and unnatural event. Good morning, how's everyone doing today? Good okay. Um, I know we had a rough one uh, yesterday, so I'm here um, because we had the worst of all possible things happen. We had a mistake and unfortunately the harm reached the patient and that's something we certainly strive never to do. Um, but I also would like you to know that we take our part in this. We are a team. We are a family. This is a systems error. We will get to the bottom of this um, and we are working with uh, the family of, of this, uh, this young person and with this young person and, um, and we also would like to support you. So that's why we're here. I just want you to know that um, you have my phone number and you can call any time and I'm available to you and uh, as is anybody, any of the other members of the leadership team. So I will leave you now this morning in able hands. This is Erin O'Donnell. She's from the peer support team and she's gonna, I know you guys are all intimately involved in the event so she's gonna talk a little bit about what happened. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Hi, so as, um, as you mentioned, my name is Erin O'Donnell and I'm a member of the peer support team here. Uh, what we're going to do today is what we do um, after any, any event that's happened that, um, that is, an, is an error, something that could be particularly emotional for the staff involved. Uh, and this is called a, a critical incident stress debriefing. So there's a format to what we're going to do today, but I'm going to try to walk you through it and make it as, as, as natural as we can. It's going to be our opportunity to come together, share the facts from our perspective of what happened, and, and really get to the meat of some of the, the thoughts and feelings that we might have, as well as how do we move forward, how do we, how do we heal, how do we come together, okay? So, um, so let's start with so let's start with some of the facts of what happened. And if you don't mind, I'm going to start over here, and just give uh, a general overview of of the facts of the situation that happened yesterday. Sure. Um, so I had a 12 year old male patient with CF. He was in respiratory distress, um, like I would with any CF patient in respiratory distress. I prescribed solumedrol. Um, I went to put the order into the computer order entry system. Um, it's relatively new, but it seemed pretty simple. And I, I, I must have been busy, or I, I don't know, I wasn't paying enough attention, and I put in an adult dose. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, he's a pediatric patient. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, and obviously, I, I messed up. I made a mistake, and he received that dose, and now he's in the ICU. Um, he became tachycardic, and so they needed to transfer him. And, and, and what was your role? Uh, so the order came into the pharmacy and my tech filled it and I signed off on it. And um, just like the doctor said, I, you know, had faith in this computer system and I'm kicking myself for that because I didn't catch the mistake. For me, I, I'm new. I, I've recently started um, a nursing career, and um, when I saw the order, it, I kind of had a little bit of a red flag because, you know, the patient was very young, um, and the dose seemed like what they usually or we usually give to adults. And for me, you know, I believed the system, and I believed, you know, that... Um, Although deep down I did have, you know, a little bit of a gut feeling, um, you know, I, I had questions about it. Uh, however, I thought that, you know, with all the steps that um, the order goes through, uh, you know, from the doctor and to the pharmacist, I believe that that was a, the right thing to do, and I went along and gave it to the patient. And I actually feel, it, I just feel very responsible about it, because I was the one to give it to him. 
Thank you. Thank you all for sharing um, sharing the events as they happened to you. Um, I'm wondering, once you found out about what happened, what was the first thought that came to your mind? What were you thinking um, as you heard that? I was really mad at myself. I'm, I'm, re I'm still really mad at myself. I can't believe I did that. I mean, what, what kind of a doctor am I that I can't even put the right dose into a computer system? I mean, it's ridiculous. I should have been paying attention. This patient is clearly a pediatric patient. I just, I mean, I, I, I'm really mad at myself. I feel really guilty. I feel like if I had just taken a little bit more time and been more discerning, then I would have seen the dosage and I would have been able to take the necessary precautions. And instead, I was rushing and haste makes waste. I, you know, I take full responsibility on myself. Uh, you know, I'm the pharmacist and that's kind of my area. I'm supposed to be making sure the doses, dosages are right. So I just feel awful about it. Really racked with guilt. Same for me. Like I said before, it's me who gave it to the person. So I understand that the order came, you know, from, you know, the top chain, but still, you know, I, I, I blame myself. I should have been careful too. I should have, you know, questioned it and discussed it with a head nurse or other staff around or other doctors um, or even picked up the phone and called the pharmacist, kind of give them some type of a red flag and I just went along with it and I cannot forgive myself. You know, one of the things that always stands out for me in doing these is when I hear each person in a room saying, it's my full responsibility, that's such an indicator um, that, that there was a system breakdown somewhere because it, because it can't really be everybody's full responsibility, right? So somewhere along the line, the system is what, is what failed, is what I'm hearing, and, and what your leadership team is also saying. But I also understand the personal the very personal um, experience of, of your own role in it. And I thank you for sharing those. Um, for you, uh, when you think about the, what, what creates the most intense emotion for you, those, the worst thing about what happened, the, the part of it that is really playing over and over in your head, um, what would that be? Would you mind sharing that? And if you don't want to share that, that's OK. You can just, you can just pass. Um. The worst part for me is when my chief came to tell me that this happened. So he said, you know, this patient is now in the ICU. There was a medication error. This is your patient. And all of a sudden I said, oh, oh my God, this must be my fault. This is horrible. And to have the chief come in and have to tell me that, I just, I keep like seeing his face. Just, I, I mean, I don't know if this is just me guessing at what he was feeling, but I felt like he was disappointed in me. I felt really disappointed in myself and I just can't like get that out of my head. I just feel like this was preventable and this poor kid has enough problems outside of another issue that comes with a you know mistake in the dosage and I like I said I I was busy I was just going through and I trusted the, the computer system and I I think that that was a mistake on my part and I need to be more vigilant. And I just really hope that that kid's okay and there isn't any kind of lasting effects from this or else I, I don't see the guilt ever going away. For me, I just take this very personal because I think of it as what if it was my own little brother or what if it was my own little son one day, what would happen to me? And him and the whole family, I think of everyone else affected by it, and most importantly, the 12-year-old. So I'm just, I'm feeling very guilty about it. And I hear that, I hear that, that guilt echoed in all of what you're saying and that deeply personal feeling that you're all taking with this. Oftentimes, those kind of strong feelings can come with symptoms like insomnia, lack of appetite, um, 
maybe wanting to pull away from the people that we're close to and be a little bit more isolated, difficulty focusing or concentrating. And I'm wondering if any of you are experiencing anything like that or something else. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know what I've been experiencing is I've been distracted at work. Like I feel almost like I'm prone to make more errors because I keep thinking about this when I'm taking care of other patients or I see this patient in those patients' faces or when I'm in the computer or entry system, I think, oh my gosh, am I gonna do this again? And it takes me 10 times as long. And I just, I, I hope it's not compromising the way that I'm practicing, but I just, it feels like I'm constantly distracted by that. I haven't been able to sleep as well. I keep on reliving kind of the moment where I was going through the uh, prescriptions and signing off on them after my pharmacy text had signed them and just keep on thinking what was going on with me that day? Why didn't I catch this? Why didn't I, you know, have more discernment? Same for me. It's actually questioning my abilities to, you know, be successful at this job and my future performance. I feel like I don't have... How am I going to, you know, go on at a job by always, you know, going and asking people when I feel like I should be more independent? And this case kind of, you know, is going to always keep me back and it's always going to hunt me in a way or another. So, I don't know how I'm going to get over this. And and what and and what what we know in these events is that you know we all feel that those feelings that that whole range of feelings the guilt the how do we move on the i don't want to make the mistake again so i'm going to double triple quadruple check everything and um that's all that's all normal places to be for you this is um and in some ways, it, it can be helpful. It can be the thing that, that you keep a little bit in the back of your mind as time goes on, but makes you a little more diligent. Um, but it can also be the thing that becomes so distracting, so, um, so challenging that it, that, it's, that it feels like a wall that's been put up that we can't quite get over to continue on the days. And, and part, of what, um, part of what we offer here in the peer support team and the um, the employee assistance and outside counseling that's offered here are ways for you to continue your process of healing and talking about this and to explore where you're at, whether you need additional support um, because the symptoms are just too overwhelming or whether um, in reaching out to your peer support, your colleagues and coming together and talking here, um, you feel like you can begin your journey of healing. Part of that journey of healing, though, is also making sure that you take care of yourselves, that you know your limits of what you can do during this time of stress, as you said, of intense stress. Whether you know, I, you know what I know, I just need to take a little bit longer with each, um, each step of my job right now, and I need to allow myself that time and that permission to do that. Um, or some extra reassurance of is this the right thing for me and to explore those conversations some, explore those conversations further um, so so what can you do for self-care to 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 cope through this who can you reach out to who do you see as your supports i mean the one thing that's been really helpful for me is other physicians in my department um, you know sometimes when you do something like this, you think you're the only one that's ever done this. And as a physician, I feel like I should never be making mistakes like this, like I, or at all. Mm -hmm. But it's at least comforting to talk to somebody who's been there before and who has the same work schedule and job as me and takes care of the same kind of patients. And at least it's nice to know that someone else knows what you feel like day in and day out. So. Uh, I echo that. I agree um you know everyone who works in the medical field is very sympathetic and they've unfortunately experienced situations like this in some way shape or form uh i'm pretty tightly wound anyway so i've always found solace in nature mm -hmm. and my family and just uh living in the moment trying to be better uh, focus on the positive and 
always keep evolving. Um, I, I would actually feel the same. Um, family support at home is important, and also speaking to you know the head nurse and um, other people in my profession in my profession who've dealt with cases and scenarios. Not exactly similar. I'm hoping not, but someone who can understand you and. I think I'm in the right place. It's just going to take some time. Well, thank you all so much for coming together and sharing. I don't think this is going to be the last of the conversations that we all have, and that's what your peer support team, your leadership team um, has offered to you, and, and we want to be ongoing supports. So um, please make sure before you leave, I'll, hand that, I'll, I'll make sure that you get brochures for your peer support team and also know how to access employee assistance program in the restaurant.